Welcome to Money Mondays. My name is JB Bolwoodin. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm the founder and CEO of Tillery Success Solutions, the largest real estate training company on the East Coast. And I started this because I want entrepreneurs to have the story of how things work. Because like most entrepreneurs, I started from the bottom also. So I want to give you the tools you need to help you grow your business to the next level. And today, I have a very special guest with me, my good friend, director of sales at Cliffco Mortgage, Ryan Riddle. So Ryan, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Us, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm honored to be, uh, this is the first, first guest. That's it, in. yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean, look, a lot of people don't know. Uh, we, we met almost a year ago now through a mutual so. friend. So yeah. much longer, right? Yeah, yeah I feel like I've known you for like seven, eight years yeah, now. We, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and through that, I learned a lot about you because in a very short amount of time, you've accomplished a lot. And you've been in the mortgage business now for about- Three and a half years. Three and a half years, and, and three and a half years, You've grown an eight-figure mortgage business, yeah, and also on top of that too, you're, not you're, by volume, by revenue. Yeah, it's a big yeah, difference. Folks. Yeah, so, so for those of you who are like want to like you know write a little comment hating, it's not in volume because everyone does you know eight figures in volume revenue. That's different. That's that's what you put in your pocket. So um, bottom line is, I think I think from there too, I think a lot of people don't really know like what the story is. So were you always in the in the mortgage business, or were you always in that? Yeah, so it's pretty funny. I mean, I wouldn't even, I couldn't even guess um, being in the position that, I, that I'm in. Um, I actually went to culinary school. Um, love the rest. I still love the restaurant business. Love it. I love going out to eat. I love spending time. I love gathering. I love catering. I love taking care of people. We always have people over our house. Like, you've been to a couple of parties. That's just what yeah. me and my wife do. We love it. Um, so that, yeah, that was my, that was my passion. Um, it, it all played out really well. I guess I'll just like roll into it, but it all played out really just just funny. So I was 20 years old, um, dating my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, and I ran a small cafe at that time. You know, we were talking about buying into it, opening up other locations, and during a renovation and just during the end of my time there, it started getting a little rocky with me and one of the owners. Um, and one of the other employees there, it, just, it was just getting a little rocky. And then at that same time, I found out that my wife, girlfriend at the time, was pregnant. And, you know, I'm 20 years old. I was already living on my own for years at that point. Um, but at 20 years old, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, like, I was ready to own it. I was ready to roll with it. But it was just, I, you know, a million thoughts. I don't even remember what was going through my head at the time. Um, and right after that, uh, me and the owner had a phone call, and it was just my time was done there. Um, so I went into another management position. I was one of the youngest managers at Hands. I figured, you know what, let me get some experience in a big corporate setting, corporate structure. I want to open up my own place. It, it would be good experience. I couldn't, it, it was coming to the end where I couldn't work for somebody anymore. Like I wanted to do my own thing. But I had the ultimatum of do I do my own thing um, and put all my eggs in one basket and risk whatever money I have or do I got to take the safe route? And obviously with a family and um, family at the time and, and my wife and my baby coming, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't take that risk. So it was right towards that time, I met a couple of gentlemen that was uh, flipping houses. One of those guys was one of the largest landowners uh, on Long Island. He's got nine, 12 shopping centers in Connecticut. This guy's an animal. You, you point out an apartment building on Long Island, he owns it. Wow. Um, but I, so I was flipping a couple of houses with them and I just didn't, uh, they were at a different stage in their life. They didn't have the drive that I wanted to have, you know? Like, it, it wasn't... They were, like, it coasting? Yeah, it just, it just wasn't for me. And at that time, um, I met Adam, my partner now, um, at a party, at a family party. So my phone was like, hey, listen, meet this guy. Um, he's going to do your mortgage. I was just buying a house. I bought my first house when I was 23. And he's like, you're going to... He's, he's going to do your mortgage. So I just listened to my phone and let him do the mortgage. Mortgage, it's not like that anymore, but it was a complete disaster. When I tell you three months, um, maybe longer, probably like three months, and I was waiting to quit my job so I can just go into house. So I was waiting to quit my job. I was waiting to close on the mortgage so I could quit my job. Wow. So like I couldn't wait to get out of there, right? Yeah. And the whole time I'm telling him, yeah, listen, I'm quitting. He's like, well, don't quit. Like stay there like a month after you close on the mortgage. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. I didn't plan on doing that. And uh, came to the point, like two months into it, I was just like, they would ask me for a document, I would show up. They would ask me for a document, I would show up. 
And me and Adam always talked about flipping houses together. I was like, listen, you wanna flip a house together, I'll come and, and, and let, let's do it. And he kept talking, do mortgages. And I'm like, I'm not a salesman, I'm not doing mortgages. Just do mortgages, I'm, I'm not a salesman, I'm not doing it. Eventually, he pulled me in. I, I eventually closed on that mortgage, pulled me in. Um, and this is three and a half later now. Uh, we, you know, we built a great team together that we probably worked on for a little over a year and a half. You know, I was getting my, my feet wet in the business a little bit. I started building a, a, a team as soon as I got into the business. Um, but now we joined forces together. There's some news coming out with uh, my involvement with the company soon. And um, yeah, we're here now, three and a half years later, and we're here. That's awesome. And, and, and during that time, you have uh, you had another daughter. I had another daughter, yeah. And so I just, <clears throat> my wife was pregnant with my second child, and I was making a, you know, the career change. Wow, and you're 23. Three. 23. And now you have, a, you have a son on the way, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And so, so you're gonna have, a, so by 28 years old, by, so 21 years old, you had your first child. Yeah. 23 years old, bought your first house. Yeah. 23 years old, you start the mortgage industry. Yeah. By 25 years old, you're running your own team, or was it by 24? By 25. Yeah, by 25, you're running your own team. You're director of sales by, what, 26? Yeah. And now you're 28 today, and you're about to make a big announcement, but we're going to hold off. But you'll see what it is down the road yeah. in the near future. Um, but you, you've come a long way. And I think a lot of people, you know, they're, they're going to want to ask this. Like, how, how do you... Does it, do you have to be a certain level of intelligence? Do you have that certain mentality? What does it take to really drive that? Because there's a lot of people that are not getting those results and uh, they don't know why. It's, uh, you know, I talk about it all the time. It's, it, there's a lot of things that go into it, right? But to, to keep it pretty simple, it's, I think, commitment, right? Like you have to be committed. Like it's just, it's just a word, right? Committed, yeah. but your level of commitment in everything that you do kind of leads the way to the, what, what the outcome is going to be. Um, and listen, I always wanted to make a lot of money. I always wanted nice, I always had nice things, always wanted nice things. Like it was never a doubt in my mind what I wanted to have, right? Like I, I live in, you know, where I live now, Old West Barry's across the street. Like I want, I want to get on the other side of that street, you know? Um, and I was always like that. I always hustled. Um, so I just knew when I got into this business, the money that was in the business and the low level of commitment that you need to have to get there. And the mortgage business is still like the wild, wild west. There's so many people that just go through the motions. They want to close their couple of loans a month. They never will become a good originator or try to be that good originator. Um, but mainly what got me into the position that I'm in now is the people that I'm around. And, you know, you're around this a lot, and it's just opportunity. you got to seek opportunity. So many people, and there's so many loan officers out there that just, they're either scared to make the move. Like, I made a career change when I had a kid pregnant. I don't have a college education. I'm not smarter than anybody in the room or anybody listening. Nothing like that. If anybody knows me, my vocabulary is horrible. <laughs> um, but... It's being committed and finding the opportunity and being around the right people. There's so many loan officers that just go to their day-to-day. -day. I was supposed to have an interview with a loan officer last week, and they're like, oh, these people have been good to me. What's your goal? Everybody says they want to run their team, but what's your goal? How are they going to get you that, that goal? And, when they're not, and, and I don't want to put it this way, like it, but it does, definitely depends on who you're around and the level that you're on because with the level that I'm in, I can offer the opportunity. Yeah. Someone who barely has the opportunity themselves can't offer you that opportunity. Or they're gonna try to hold you in that position as long as you can because then you're ruining what they've built up yeah. until this date. So the, the one thing that we really um, try to do on the team and being that Adam's one of the owners of the bank and we have the team together, there's a ton of room for growth with what we do, especially within the company. Yeah. So, you know, if, if someone comes and sits down to me, with me and says, hey, I want to have my own team in two years, we can guide them to that path to have them in two years. You know, it's not that they're not, a, uh, you're not coming to work for a team that's working at another company on a team. Like, it's, yeah. you know. It's not trickle down, it's like directly no. to exactly. the stream. I mean, so what would you say to someone who's like watching right now and they're like, you know, they, so here's the difference. Actually, let me shift the question. One of the hardest things that I've noticed is, obviously I'm, you know, in our, especially in our market, in the real estate space, a lot of people are familiar with me, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. The mortgage space, although it works very closely with the real estate industry, is not the same. No. They're not the same at all. It's a very different culture, very different environment. And what I've noticed is, is that in the last two, three years, real estate agents have become a lot more collaborative, but we don't see that in the mortgage industry, where if someone, Forget about it. sometimes even if they're in the same bank, they don't want to talk to each other. But if they're different companies, especially, there's really this like line in the sand 
Wh why do you think that is? I have no clue. So another loan officer just commented on one of the like pieces of content that I put up. And uh, you know, so you know, I shot a message to him trying to recruit him. And this guy who runs this other team has a great business too. And I'll tell him, hey, you have a great business. It's like, hey, let me show you how undervalued you are. It looks really weak of you to reach out to other people. How are you supposed to recruit? Yeah. How, how you, it looks weak of me? How are you supposed to, how do you recruit? I, I don't know why originators are like that. We, you know, we go to a couple events and we see the people. It's like, guy, I know you see me, you know? I, I, I don't, you know, it's not an ego thing for me. I go right up to them and say hello, but I, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. And I, and I think some of the stuff that we're trying to do this year hopefully breaks the ice on that. Yeah, yeah, because I think one of the biggest pieces that's so disappointing is, is that one is it's totally okay to be in the same industry and working with the same people because there's enough for everybody. And, but the funny thing is, and not, not in every situation, in my situation in particular, they think I'm their competition. I'm not trying to be your competition. I'm not, my, my thoughts and my position is way past where, you, where you're even thinking about bringing your business. But what I love about my like the position that I'm getting into is I can help grow other people's businesses. I don't want nothing more, you know, yeah. to build some relationships and watch someone come closing four loans a month to closing eight loans a month. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a bunch. We're doing we're doing a bunch of things out, outside of the box to to get people there. We're even thinking about dabbling in the real estate industry a little bit. Um, and you know, I, you know, I'll just say now, not a lot of people know, but we do own a real estate brokerage as well. And uh, you know, we're opening trying to open up our fourth office right now and I want to team up a loan officer if you're a really good loan officer you're closing four or five loans a month I want to take those your four or five loans a month and give you a real estate office that I know I worked and built and you'll get all the deals and double your income and I'm not padding your pricing no you can only make a hundred basis points on this I'm not doing that yeah I want to see everybody succeed you know? yeah which is, which is a big opportunity and I think you know I, I think people hopefully they'll, they'll realize that and even if they don't decide to they don't necessarily need to take up an offer, but they don't need to be upset. No, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I think the biggest problem is, is that I think the, the mortgage industry, for all you LOs that are listening, dude, it's okay to talk to other LOs. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to like network. It's okay to call someone, like, yo, what's working for you? What's not? Literally. Because, because the bottom line is, one is, if Microsoft can't take it all, if Warren Buffett can't take it all, if JP Morgan can't take it all, if, if Swiss banks, Deutsche Bank, these guys can't take it all, then no Long Island mortgage company is going to be able to take it all. Exactly. So, so, so we, but, we, but you can have it all. Yeah. You can't take it all, but you can have it all. And working together, I think, gets you there a lot faster. Um, so you're an innovative person, I think, and I'm an innovative person. I think that's what, what attracted us to each other yeah. and why, why we're working so closely, why Cliffco Mortgage Bankers is, is the, is the uh, exclusive preferred partner uh, with my company and also why we do so many things together which leads us to this big project that we're working on that has a yeah. lot of progress, also had some hiccups. Kind of want to talk about that is putting together a thousands of people event, uh, that a seven figure event, yeah. uh, bouncing back after COVID. Yeah, so it's, it's had a turtle so far. And yeah. You know, right before this, we were talking about it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I know how you feel about it. I mean, I don't think the words can describe. I think this is checking, uh, boxes off both of our bucket lists, right? And, yeah. and it's only the beginning. We don't even know what it's going to turn out turn out to be. But that, so, so you, you have a quote that you want to make one million millionaires, right? Yeah. And, and I love it because I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride that wave with you doing this because I think that's the way that we can build a community here on Long Island because where the realtors are trying to do it a little bit, they're having, they're having a decent amount of success and you see the collaboration on social media and these podcasts now and you see it working, but nothing like that for mortgage lenders. Yeah. Nothing like that for a combination of both, you know? Um, and I hope that's what this really, this event brings it to between education, turning people, in, you know, turning people into millionaires, but really growing this community where we can have a collaboration across. Like, I have no problem you coming down, seeing my operation working at another bank, you know? I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, I'm, I'm a very loyal person. I know where I stand when it comes to other banks, my pricing, yeah, I, I know where I stand. I'll beat any loan officer's pricing that's watching this right now. I know, I know I will. I've never sat down with another, another LO from another company and not done that, but it's okay if you want to stay where you're at. I want to know what you're doing and, I, and you can sure as hell look into what I'm doing. It's not a secret. I didn't figure it out, I, you know, I didn't, yeah. you know, I didn't turn a steering wheel into a different shape. Like it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. So yeah. um, 
hopefully with these events and bringing these groups of people and opening up a little bit more, we, we see that and it would be great. And I can't wait for them, you know, I don't even know what the hell we're gonna do next, but. Oh, the next one's gonna be here. So I mean, at, like I think after Entrepreneur Conference, people are gonna really start to see like what collaboration is really about. Also creating community because we'll all get there together. Yeah. And I want people to look back and really remember, you know, what we did, how it changed their life. Because I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was doing coaching for a company at one point, this is the first coaching I ever did. They said, okay, the way you're gonna get paid is you're gonna get 10% of the agent's revenue. I was like, all right, not bad. And what happened is as the agents were closing deals, the brokerage wasn't taking out my cut. And I got hit for over six figures that first year. You know how much money I made that year from coaching? How much? Did I ever tell this story? No. $538 what? for the year. I got banged for over 100 Gs my first year of coaching because the company wouldn't take the 10% out. And only one agent who closed noticed that they didn't take it out and she went back and said, take it out of my check so he gets paid. Wow. Yeah. And when I went to them and asked them to help, like, you know, like, dude, make it right, like, you control the checks, um, they didn't. They didn't. And I was very upset by it. I mean, I'm dude, sure. like, I left the brokerage right after I got married um, that I was with. She didn't pay me out anything when I left. I had to sue her. And I just got married, did a destination wedding, renovated my place. Then I went to this company because I wanted to work in leadership. And um, I worked for free, which was my idea, because I wanted to prove myself. And then when we did this, this coaching thing, that was like the big break because I wasn't allowed to sell real estate during this time as staff either. Wow. So I was working like really like free. And when that broke apart, I remember I was like crying on my one year anniversary because I couldn't afford to take my wife out to dinner. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know, I can't believe you never told me this story. Yeah, no, dude, it's a deep, yeah. So what happened was is that I remember like at the time, you know, Grant Cardone was someone I was following. And he said, I'm doing this thing called 10X Growth Con. And I didn't have the money. So I swiped my credit card. I remember I took my wife out there. She got laid off from her job wow. during that time. And we were going down to the, the, uh, the market and we were buying a sandwich and sharing it. You know what I mean? And I remember when I was going there at the conference, I get a little emotional if I think about it too much yeah. because like, I remember like how hard it was, but I said, no, I gotta do this. When I went there and I saw the people that were speaking, how they inspired me and how much money could be made and their stories were just as hard as mine, I literally came back, redid my whole coaching program, and I went from making $538 in one year to between four to $6,000 a day. Wow. And come my second year anniversary, I bought myself a Maserati and I bought her a new BMW. That's great. Instead of not being able to buy you know, dinner. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I mentioned this and the reason why I want to do this entrepreneur conference and the reason why I know you're so pumped about it too is because that conference was the first step that changed my trajectory of my whole entire life yeah. to what it is today. So if we could do that for two people, it's, dude. It's amazing. It's worth it. Like it, it'll change your life. It'll save a life. So that's, that was something huge about that. So with this conference, I'm really hoping it's not just about Forget about the growth is gonna come with it. The excitement's gonna come with it. I think a lot of people are gonna do a lot better, but I know the trajectory of someone's life is gonna change. And I'm really excited because one of the guys that did it is coming to coming speak out. at it. You know, so that, that, that's, you know, that, that was the like fun part of it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, st you, started, you started with, you know, uh, I don't know how to say it, but you know, he gave you that vision, right? He helped yeah. you get that vision and now you're bringing him to the first one. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Exactly, and we can share that vision. Because what's cool about you is that like, I don't, here's what a lot of people don't know and, and I hope you don't mind me sharing it, yeah. but it's all good stuff that yeah. I'm sharing. You look out for your people. Yeah. Like you really wanna see people grow. You're not afraid to take risks or chances. You're not, you're not, you're not chasing losses. You're always looking for the next revenue and the more growth. Yeah. And you flow a lot of power to people. Yeah. Like once someone's in your circle, you really like have their back. And I think what's really cool is a lot of people are gonna get to know you a lot better because now thousands of people are about to be in that circle and they're yeah. gonna start to really realize like what, what this is all about. It's not, it's not even just about in my vision as far as like mortgages and referrals. That's gonna happen automatically. I think what's gonna happen is people are gonna be like, dude, like you guys really changed my life. And I, and I have a feeling that one day when our kids get older, you know, and long, long time from now, we're not, we're not around. I know that our kids will go places and they're, they're gonna say, hey, your dad yeah. changed my life. About both, both of us. Yeah. So I think uh, that, that's really what's really so exciting about this event. Yeah, I think um, it's kind of going back to what I was talking about a little bit. It's like, 
who you're working with and who you're around. Yeah. Right. So I, you know, the one thing, probably one of the mo you know, the the proudest thing that I have looking back is I could rattle off. I need more than two hands. There are people that are around us that we have already made their life better, and it's like it's only been a short period of time. Yeah. You know, so you can only at a certain point you can only help somebody so much, and then they sure. have to take it off. But there's so many people that we gave that foundation to, and whether it's a, a different car they're driving or money that they've never made or making decisions that they never made. Or the house or, that or they thought, bought or whatever. You yeah. know, um, it's crazy. And, you know, you, you know, Adam and I think about it all the time. Like, we, we think, should we do a fund for the employees? Like, should we do, you know? So we're, we're always thinking, our employees are the, is that, you know, that's our main focus, right? Yeah. You know, if you have a good envi work environment, I mean, sky's the limit. Um, you know, during COVID, we didn't, a lot of people in the mortgage business even got laid off, even though no one knew that they were going to come out of it and the mortgage business was going to be so busy. But never once did we not cut a check. Never once did we lay anybody off. Never, like, I cut my check before. I, I you know, we were looking at the account and we're just like, all right, good, we got, we got months to roll out. Um, but then when, it, when you went through March and you went through April, right, and, you know, at the end of April for the mortgage business when you kind of saw, like, Oh, we're gonna rock out, you know. Yeah. Um, but going two months into it, and when your when your expenses are hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, I mean, our overhead's four hundred thousand dollars plus a month just on the team. You look at it, it's like, all right, how long can I withstand this? You know, and we never laid anybody off. Never. Not like we just didn't change anybody's living. Yeah, which is which is huge because that ROI yeah. shows now. Like, the, yeah. You know, because you have a, you have a very loyal group of people around you. We were just talking about. It. We had somebody leave because they thought the grass was green on the other side. He was back in my he was back in my office in two weeks. He was coming, leaving there at night to come disclose loans <laughs> by me. Yeah, you know, he's like, ah, I'm out. Yeah, and, and sometimes they got to experience that too. Exactly. He was a young kid, and I get it. And I had the same conversation with him. I'm a firm firm believer that you know you do need to work in a couple of different environments, and you're going to grab so much from each different environment. The one thing with me is I've only worked at Cliff Cone. I will always work at Cliff Cone. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. So I won't know what those other places are like. We know the owners. I've sat down with them. I know them. I know how the other, I've talked to enough people. I have an idea of how those companies are running. Um, but I'll never physically work at another place. So, you know, I can't knock the kid for wanting to go see, right? He's been at a couple other banks, wanting to see what they are. Now I know he's been at three different banks and I know he's found his home, you know? And uh, he's still young enough where he's got a long road ahead of him and he can really build his path at Cliffco. Because even though we're one of the oldest mortgage lenders on Long Island, um, I feel like we're just breaking we're just breaking out. Yeah. And we're going into directions that I you know, I don't even know the positions that are gonna be needed yet. There's so much I I'm so excited for all the growth that um, whoever's around right now is their life's gonna change. Yeah. That that's awesome. That's the one the probably the most rewarding piece of yeah. all. So if anyone is on the come up right now or trying to come up, uh, well, one is, can people feel free to reach out to you? Absolutely, anytime. You know, like, anytime. D DM me, text me, call me. It's just a conversation. I almost wanted to start like an anonymous thing um, to see what you're getting. Because listen, at the end of the day, uh, pricing isn't everything, right? In the mortgage business, everybody looks about pricing. If you're thinking about pricing, you're the loan officer that's closing two deals a month, and you're like. If I can make an extra thousand dollars on this loan, wow! I can make an extra twenty-five thousand a year, right? That's not, that's not getting you everywhere. So there are a lot of expenses in the business, and it's more to it than just pricing. But what's everything else? What's your growth? Like I, I'm so curious. Like I wish more people would actually be open about it. Maybe we should do a challenge. Yeah. I create like a little group of just all mortgage people. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll call it like. Uh, I don't know, we'll call it like a, you know, draw at sundown or something. Yeah. <laughs> just you just see who shows up. On the top of your head. I don't yeah. know how you do it. I don't know, dude. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but we got to create something. I think I think we got to do something with the mortgage community to make it a little bit more uh, interactive because there's a lot of good people in it, and yeah. I feel like and I feel like if they all collaborated, you know, there's no there's no sauce. If yeah. you know if everyone's co cooking together, it could, it could get there a lot faster, and it never hurts to to reach out and talk. Absolutely, I agree. So. so in closing, if you give biggest piece of advice to anyone on the come up right now, what's your biggest piece of advice you'd give them? Look for opportunity and jump on it. And I'm going to go back to what I always say is it's the people around around you. Make sure that you're around good people. Um, it's you know the, the the people around you don't have to be the smartest people, right? Or or the wealthiest people are are doing the most. But when a couple of minds 
get together, it could be a lot of, you know, a lot of great things can happen. So it's, it's jump on opportunity, don't run away from it, and uh, look to see, look, you know, look around and see who's around you. Should they, should they ever be scared about losing money? Never, never. I never bat an eye. Even, even when it's a loss, I never bat an eye. Just it's a tool, been, right? It's just, it's, you, move on, you move on to the next. The losses come in everything. Lord, and whoever told you that they never lost before, they're lying to you. Yeah. You try to mitigate your losses, it's a lot more stressful, and just yeah. keep going forward and winning more than you lose. Yeah. But, if, you know, for, for everybody that's watching, um, JB kind of highlighted this on me, but, you, you know, everybody that's watching, this guy, he's amazing. Um, he's done amazing things for, co for my company. Um, I think, you know, what we have in store is going to shake the – just shake the whole real estate industry around here. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and the one year that we've been working together, it's probably one of the best relationships, working relationships that I've had. So everybody who, who doesn't follow this guy or really doesn't know enough about what he does, inquire with him. Thank you, bro. The film is definitely no, neutral. There, it's, it's been amazing. So you heard it. It's at, at Riddle Mortgage, right? At Riddle Mortgage. At Riddle Mortgage. Follow this guy. Message him. If you're in real estate or in mortgages, do not be afraid because I'm telling you right now, everyone who goes around him, their life gets better. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to, on one cap, yeah, sure. I'm going to close off. If you have a large team on Long Island and you're not getting the service that you want from, from a, a mortgage lender, I will do all TBD commitments on all your deals. I can get you commitments on your deals, you know, but once you're under contract in a day and for your pre-approvals, TBD commitments in a couple of days. Dude, that's phenomenal. That's Just awesome. to start building relationships out here. Dude, I mean, that, that, how can you beat that? Yeah. <laughs> so, Ryan... Thank you so much for being on Money Mondays, man. I appreciate it. It was an honor having you on episode one. It's my, my pleasure. I'm honored. Thank you. So we started this podcast with one thing in mind, which is to help motivate and inspire you. And here's the one thing I want you to know. You're much closer to success than you think, and you're not alone in your struggle, and you will get through it. And I'm going to be your wingman across the whole way. Until next time, be well and do well. You deserve everything in life. Natty 3 fifth you so insecure so you cuff your chick I don't want yours I got love right here ain't official yet we've been rocking for years